<laughs> Another great eclectic uh, selection HP. Uh, your your vids are the best for me, and uh, that was a great great uh, bunch you showed. And um, I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I just watched it, but I've had to do a couple of things in between, so there'll be a few on this. But uh, the standouts like um, showing that Martin Moon with the exclamation marks. Man, that's I've never seen that, and no, I'm really jealous. This is my original. Uh, I bought this when it came out, 78, 77, sorry, and, uh, yep, I thrashed this, absolutely belted this, and, uh, yeah, I, this is a masterpiece, you know, of it. it's a one-off type thing, it's, uh, Tuxedo Moon was another band from that time, and it was just one of those, it just summed up that year for those that weren't into the, the brainless punk, this is not punk, you know, this is, it's um, punkish, but uh, awesome stuff. Hypnotic, mesmerizing guitar. What a great band. Tom Verlaine, lead vocals, guitar. Richard Lloyd, guitar, vocals. Fred Smith, bass, guitar. And Billy Ficker, drums. What a bunch of junkies. <laughs> And talking of junkies, this is also who I met in person. You could smell the junk sickness on him. I'm not joking. Um, and uh, the wonderful Richard Hell and the Void, Void Droids. I always associate these two together because he was in the original television. Or he went his own way, and I'm glad he did because he wouldn't have fitted this. This is a this is a brilliant album. It, it's timeless, you know, uh, to me. Uh, I got the CD, and the original vinyl shits on the CD. Just just my opinion. So this is not a brilliant LP. It's got its moments. Love comes in spurts, you know. It's very clever wordplay, and Blank Generations a classic. Um, yeah, it's pretty good, but the real beauty of this is it's got, you know, Mark Bell, who went on to join the Ramones, uh, Ivan Julian, what a cool looking dude, cool cat, but poor guy's old now, and he's very sick, unfortunately, Robert Quine, who sadly committed suicide, after, you know, and uh, Richard Hell, good writer, his books are much better than uh, his records. So, I yeah, I'm just working off the top of my head. Um, that one got my eye straight away. The, the you know the quotation marks around Mark E. Moon. Yeah, Tammy Wynette. Stand by a man is my favourite. I'm not a big country fan. Uh, I don't like any country after the 1960s except Neil Young. To me, Neil Young's in the you know like Neil Young and Hank Williams are my favourite country artists. And a lot of people go, oh, but Neil Young's not really country. No, he's not really country, but when he does country, he is country, you know. It's that, you know, um, harking back to, you know, great lyrics like Hank Williams. He's, come on, let's face it, Hank Williams is the man. And, um, but, yeah, it's just that Stand By a Man, Tammy Wynette, her voice is just a heartbreaking. Oh, God, what a voice. It, it tails off a bit. The, the first minute is just, it, it's building up and it's her voice, the emotion in it, you know. People go, oh, but it's, a se you know, it's sexist and so what? That's how things were in the 60s in the backwoods. You know, I don't think there are many woke or whatever the fuck that means, um, blokes out there you know, taking the children to school while the wife is working in a high-powered job in IBM computers. No. He was a whiskey swilling bootlegger and she was just there to breed breed the young'uns so he could have a bit of um, strange on the side while she was up the duff, you know what I mean? So Stand By Your Man says much more than the lyrics. It, it's uh, it's very deep, but it, it tails off a bit. It sort of gets a bit too hysterical near the end, but that first minute, oh my God. My God, the only... The only other one that can come close is Patsy Cline, you know, 
Patsy. I cannot listen to Patsy Cline in public. It's embarrassing because I will. It brings me to tears. Her, <clears throat> her voice, just talking about it, I'm getting teary. Yeah, Patsy Cline and Tammy Lynette. Um. Uh, my favourite, uh, yeah, the, the the Mighty Diamonds. I haven't got any of their stuff, but they are terrific. I'm, I have heard them. Yes. My favourite uh, reggae album is from 1977 is uh, Burning Spear, Dry and Heavy. Um, or Winston Rodney, his real name. If you've never heard that, I, I really suggest, recommend you get and hear it. Dry and Heavy. I've got other albums of his, but it is a masterpiece. Every track is just brilliant. It's not like an obvious reggae album like Bob Marley or something. It's much more subtle than that. It's a bit like the Congos and those other groups, which are a, a sort of a step up from that, that lower level um, stuff. Uh, but it, it, it's like reading the Old Testament or listening to a, a Moses or some one of those weirdos in the Bible. I'm not religious. I'm not Christian, but that's for sure. But it has that sort of... It sounds like some old guy walking through the deserts in Egypt before BC, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's Old Testament stuff. And, oh, my God. And it's, got, it's just beautiful. Dry and heavy. Highly recommended, my favourite. I'm not a huge reggae fan, you know. I've got, you know, the best of Trojan on CD and all that. i got enough. I've got, I got my favourites. But it does, you know, it's... You can get too much of the same thing. Um, I'll say the other two I can think of at the end. Um, the Chills, I have a Heavenly Pop hit on the 45. They are Kiwis, mate. Uh, fish and chips. Not fish and chips, like we say, but fish and chops. It's almost fish and chips. Oh, I can't do it. Yes, uh, the, the evil enemy parked off the coast of Australia. We should get our, when we get our nuclear subs, we should um, try out it, um, attacking them. <laughs> You'll send the, the fucking bastards come over here and sponge off our bloody taxpayers. But yeah, heavenly pop hits. The chills, wonderful stuff. Christ, there's some good shit coming out of Kiwi land in the 70s. You know, split ends is the obvious big success when they became crowded house. Huge worldwide success. But much, much, much goodness coming out of Kiwi country in those days. Um, what was the other one? Oh, the Avalanches. Yes, they're from Perth, which technically is in Australia. But Perth, to us on the East Coast, may as well be fucking Zam Zambia in Africa. <laughs> yeah, it fucking looks like bloody Africa. And except looks like Africa if there are no black people there. <laughs> There were a few abos wandering around in the desert out there, I guess. But, um, yeah, they're from, they were from Perth. Yeah, and I, I bought that for a friend of mine. Uh, she, I don't, not in touch with her anymore. But uh, I, I cannot believe it was twenty over 20 years ago I bought that for her. I bought it for her Christ, a Christmas present, I do believe. I played it a few times myself. I know what you're saying about it. It's got its moments. Introducing. I played that recently. I bought that when it came out at the time, but I... I, did, I couldn't find a vinyl copy, so I had to buy it on CD. And I'm glad I did, because I tend to listen to most of my music on a discman outside. Um, so I'm, I've got it on CD. I, I, I just love that. that I bought the follow-up, and it's, I played it once or twice. It, there's just something about introducing that is just so wonderful. And yes, I know what you mean. When, when you know, it, I did play it recently, and I thought, yeah, it's still great. But it was really, really powerful shit back in the, was it mid-late 90s, 96, something like that. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah, the Avalanches. That was, that was an interesting time, the late 90s. I, I love that, your vids, mate. It, 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 you know, a lot of the stuff, I'm much older than you. I'm 71 soon. And, and the thing is, but I, I was buying, I was up to date with shit right up until I was 50. You know, okay, 20 years have gone by and I don't, wouldn't know what the fuck's going on in modern music. It's, you get to a certain age and it's just to forget it. You feel like a dirty old man or something, you know? 
I, mean, I felt like a dirty old man going into the indie record shops in Sydney when I was in my late 40s. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, Christ, they must think I'm here to perv on, you know, the shop girls or something. I don't know, I just didn't feel comfy. The old guys, the guys that ran the places knew me because I'd been going there for decades. But, you know, I just, it just gets to a point where you feel like, you, you know, like it's just not right, you know. It was like when I was young, you'd see a guy about 35 or 40 with flares and trying to look like a mod or something, and it was just, <laughs> creepy's not the word. It's beyond creepy. Um, this one I bought ages ago, and I've never played it. This is Ronnie Burns, uh, starring in this an EP. Very last day, that I think that is uh, BG's. Let it be me, true, true love and too many people. Let's see. Now, Ronnie Burns was a huge pop star in Australia. This is an original copy, but even the original plastic bag is in stunning condition. I mean, it hasn't been played at all, I would say. Uh, oh, no, okay. No, very last day, Stooky Yarrow. This is why it hasn't been played. I've never played it. That's the, uh, one of those creeps, um, Peter, Paul and Mary. Let It Be Me. Well, that's a soppy ballad. True True Lovin' by Welsh. And Too Many People. Oh, Ransford. Well, Ransford's that, uh, the Hollies use that as a pseudonym. So I can see why this is in mint condition, including the bag. And the cover? Well, the cover's slightly got a slight bend. It's not worth listening to. That BP feels heavier than some vinyl LP from 1973. I just bought it because I love the cover. And it's in a... Um, see, the other, the other good things I love about EPs, When a Man Loves a Woman EP. Uh, now, there's a lot of good Aussie ones on here. Now, th these are worth a fortune if you can find these um raining in my heart tony worsley wait by the water tony barber pride and joy normie row ain't it strange ray brown the sound of the purple hearts that would go for hundreds if you found that um dance session the who is, is, is an aussie um ep that's highly collectible here yeah. uh, well everywhere i've got the mama bj thomas um ep Missing You, Tony Worsley. I got the single. This is the Vince Maloney set. That that would go for ah, Christ anywhere, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The most expensive forty-five I ever bought was um, the Vince Maloney set. No good without you. Their version of the Birds track, B I R D S, from Ronnie Wood's brother was in it. It's a UK band. But I had to have it because I heard it on the radio when I was 14 and I, I searched for it and I finally got it on eBay about 10 years ago. And when you look up Discogs, which I don't, but I did look it up recently just for some reason, and I looked it up my um, Vince Maloney sex single and the highest price ever paid for it's $160. Well, guess who the fucking schmuck was that paid the $160? Mwah! Yeah. Little old me. Just a poor boy, Mike Ferber and the Bowery Boys. Now, I got just a poor boy on um, the commotion label. Um, Mike Ferber, unfortunately, committed suicide or was murdered. He was hanged one way or the other. Uh, very, very sad. A pommy got kid that came out and lived in Queensland. Pretty good little band, that. And uh, his stuff's highly, highly collectible. His one and only album, Mike Ferber's album, goes for an absolute fortune. And it's a great cover. You know, really, really cool cover on that. Somebody help me to spend today. Look, I'm getting carried away here. Um, yeah, so I bought it. Didn't cost much. Oh, that's right, my Ronnie Burns story. Um, I, thought, I got to see the Masters Apprentices um, just before they left to go to England to, to make um, record at Abbey Road. Ronnie Burns was um, the, the, the um, warm-up act. We pelted him with tomatoes. Later out, we found he was a black belt karate expert. Better go now. 